Welcome to the beautiful Saturday. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show with Ray Smith, Sandra Johnson, and Danielle Johnson from the what are the Johnson Smith team. We're here today with John Spur, who is the CEO of Inspired Life Mortgage and also part of the which is part of the Inspired Life Group Symposium. Emporium, something like that. Also, <laughs> Inspired Life Emporium. <laughs> it started. <laughs> we also have Don Geiter, who is the CEO of Indie Realty. He's our broker, uh, which is a local brokerage here in Tucson. How are you guys doing today? How's everybody doing today? We are good. good. We're good. Thank you. I've, I've, we, have a, we have a full house today. Yeah. I'm apologizing, guys, because I'm so excited about this show today because we have so much information, I think, to bring to you that I just want to get started. Um, one thing, if you guys have noticed that there's an NAR settlement dealing with uh, real estate agents and buyer brokerage, buyer brokerage fees, that's right? Okay. Close enough. Good. Close enough. <laughs> and so we thought that uh, un until this is resolved, that we're going to take the par first part of the show to really highlight those things and talk about them. And my reason is because I want to make sure you guys out there, when you're listening and you want to come into the real estate world, whether you're a buyer or seller, that you're armed and that you're not afraid to come into the market, that you do have someone you can come and talk to. I'm kind of pulling people as I run into them and say, you know, if they say, hey, I was a market out there, I'll ask the question, you know, are you aware of the the settlement that NAR is in the process of? And, and I'll, honestly, a lot of people are saying no. And there are still a lot of people that are asking, are you guys, you know, how is this going to change your business, right. friends especially? that are um, constantly kind of checking in with us. So I think it's super relevant. I think it's subject to change. Any thoughts on that, Don? <laughs> well, it's all subject to change right now because, you know, the final, everything final hasn't rolled out yet. But right. there are um, processes and procedures in the works already at AAR uh, that I'm very, very kind of satisfied and proud with the way that they're working through what the change is going to look like. And to piggyback on what Raymond is saying, you know, don't don't have any fear. If you're in the real estate market right now or about to get into it, um, just because the settlement is happening and the ramifications of it are going to kick in in August, um, there's no reason at all for any consumers, any buyers, any sellers to to be waiting, to be nervous, to be scared about it. We had we have a uh, John Spur here from Inspired Life, and we're talking about changes. Don John is going. What do you have to say about the changes going on so far? You know, from a, a mortgage perspective, I think Fannie and Freddie and FHA have answered our general concerns on mm -hmm. with the changes and how the compensation of a buyer's agent affects the transaction. Um, okay. and, and it really, from a mortgage perspective, is not going to change much for us at all. Uh, the one that's still up in the air is VA, and uh, the Vet Veterans Administration is very aware of the looming problem with doing a VA mortgage with the verbiage that's in the current settlement with mm -hmm. NAR. Um, the problem is they don't know how to fix it because one thing I think people don't understand is VA lending guys guidelines, the actual guidelines we underwrite to are a federal law. They were written as a law. And to make changes to them, you have to have an act of Congress. So it's not simply just going, oh, we're going to just scribble this out and fix this over here and move forward. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does need some congressional oversight and, and approval. Um, and unlike Fannie and Freddie and FHA, the VA's portion of their guidelines that addresses this issue that in the that's coming down with the NAR settlement is it specifically says buyers cannot pay real estate commissions. Right. It just it's one line spells it out. And so that it, it unlike Fannie and Freddie and FHA where it was vague and we just got some clarification. Yes, you, you, there's no clarifying that. It's very straightforward. <laughs> and I would say in the past, you know, when you're talking about um, a VA buyer not being able to pay a real estate commission, there were a lot of companies that were um, charging flat rate commissions and, and that was um, really done to protect that buyer so they weren't getting hit with those additional costs. And I think the intention was great, and the way that the um, the way that the compensation worked, you know, it made a lot of sense. But at this point, we certainly wouldn't want VA buyers not having representation because they're not right. allowed to compensate an agent. And yeah. we're going to assume that it's going to be addressed. And I think this would be a really good time to just reset, you know, for listeners who may not understand 
kind of what we're talking about, the NAR settlement. And in its most simplistic terms, there's been a decoupling of commissions, with, which basically means sellers pay listing brokerage commissions and buyers pay buyers brokerage commissions. And that it, it, the system's been a little different, but that's the bottom line of it. And so when John says the law literally says that a VA buyer cannot pay their commissions, well, it's in direct conflict with the new processes coming out after right. the settlement. And this is an unusual, I mean, we, we dealt with this in 08, 2010, 2014, in the mortgage side of things when the Dodd-Frank legislation came out and the legislation contradicted how we currently did things. It, it all worked out. I mean, we're still lending, we're still doing mortgages, you know, 10, 15 years later from that legislation, mm -hmm. but we had to be patient and we had to let the legislators do what they do and we put our two cents in and <coughs> We, we worked through all of it, and, and there was definitely some contradictions. So it doesn't surprise me on the NAR side of things with what you guys are going through that everything doesn't line up. It, it will work itself out. We just don't know what it's going to be. And how long it's going to take to do that. Correct. What we say to the buyers and oh, to anyone get ready to go into the market right now, Don? Um, again, I think the most important thing is don't be fearful. Um, things are, un are very under control. There, there's some unknown, but the we're already working on dealing with the unknowns and we already have in development the appropriate forms, you know, and the appropriate processes that will uh, kind of take care of the issue and allow us to operate under the rules um, and to the benefit of, of buyers and sellers. So the most important thing is don't be fearful. Don't be sitting around waiting saying, let's see which what impact this has on things because, you know, I really feel like the net impact on um, pricing and or commissions is yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. And so I would urge any, everybody not to make assumptions of what's going to happen with pricings or, or commissions and be confident uh, that the professionals and at the association, um, everything is in the works to deal with the new reality. I think the thing that I, I always remember and want people to understand is that buyers, agents have always been paid. It's not like we've, we've, we've worked for free. No one works for free. So right. Not for very part. long, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and so the problem is that what the buyers haven't seen was that they, well, how did you get paid? We got paid by the by the seller. But if they look at the settlement statements, they'll see that we're both getting paid. So maybe we need to emphasize that from now on. Hey, here's the settlement statement. We are getting, we do get compensated. But just like any other side of a lawyer, both lawyers get paid for their jobs. When you have a, a, a big transaction like, like what we have, which is dealing with homes, you need both sides to be able to be compensated so they can equally represent whoever, both sides of the both sides of the, the deal. That's right. And the, and the point of everything is to have increased transparency. So yes. nobody can leave the closing table saying, I don't understand how this person got paid. I didn't understand how that person got paid. I didn't understand where those funds came from. We will be completely transparent and we won't have to worry about uh, people feeling like they don't understand the process. In case you're wondering who you're, who's all these great voices on the radio, you're listening to Don Geisler, who is the CEO and Desnick Broker for Indie Realty. And you're also listening to John Spur who is the CEO of Inspired Life. We still have Danielle and Bray and me and Sandra here. And we're with... <laughs> don't look at me like that. Danielle, with... Ray, and me. He has uh, multiple personalities that come to the forefront when we are on the radio. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show with Danielle, Sandra, and myself. We're with the Indie Realty, Indie Realty team. We're the Johnson Smith team at Indie Realty. We're back with Don Geisler and John Spur. Don Geisler is the CEO and designated broker for Indy Realty, and John Spur is the CEO of Inspired Life, which is also part of Inspired Group, Inspired Life Group. John, when we were talking on the first segment, you had mentioned all the changes that occurred in um, the early 2000s. It sounds like you've been in the business for a while. A day or two. A day or two. <laughs> yeah, this will be my, what, 32nd year? Yeah, so you've seen a lot of change. And I know, Don, you've been in the industry as well for a very long time. So these kind of things don't really scare you. Is it like you, you, we hear a lot, a lot of your meetings, Don. You're always saying change is inevitable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how you react and how you're prepared for the change when it comes that makes you makes us, I think, in your realty, want to prepare brokerage. See, Don, I told you they sometimes listen to they you. They do listen, <laughs> yes. They're very malleable. They hear. I love it. Um, we've just We've been through so much change and... I, when I say it, I'm being very genuine about it. Things are going to change. Um, the, it, what we do may look different. It may look vastly different. It may look slightly different. 
you know, to, in, to some people, it won't look different at all, but it'll be different. And we've just lived through so much stuff um, that I know in my heart, buyers are still going to be buying and sellers are still going to be selling and great professionals are still going to be coordinating those transactions and they're going to need representation more than ever always. Um, and so, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have any fear. I have massive curiosity. I'm always very interested when the headlines come out every morning and there's a new facet, a new nuance, mm -hmm. you know, to what we're dealing with. And my mind goes through a hundred different scenarios about how might this or might this not affect things. But I just know that we're going to solve it, deal with it, move on. And in the long run, I really honestly feel like everybody's going to benefit. Yeah. You and know, I, when you look at some of the other industries that have gone through some major shifts in the way that their industry has worked, and I'm thinking specifically of like movies and, and you know, the blockbuster era that turned into Netflix or how music is purchased and shared. And people are still out there making music and they're still out there making movies and they're still out there making money off of it. So I think that it's just important that as professionals that we don't just fight change, but that we make sure that we're engaged and we're a part of that change. It, it, it just, it, the end result, I think, for real estate in, in the settlement is going to be very similar to what we experienced in mortgage. And we we're all fearful for a little while what was going to happen. And uh -huh. um, But at the end of the day, we still get from point A to point B on a mortgage. It's just what happens behind the scenes changed dramatically and the paperwork that we do and the processes that we go through and some of the regulations that we deal with changed. But on the front end, from the consumer perspective, I, it's still the same process to get from point A to point B. It's what we're doing behind the scenes that changed and, and we just had to adapt and, and work through it. And I, I think I kind of look at this with what's going on with real estate and realtors and, and NAR is going to be very similar to you guys are still going to sell houses and you're still going to get from A to B. It's just there may be four more steps in between that you have to deal with behind the scenes. Hey, Don, That's can right. you, sorry about that, Don, can you talk about the fact that um, we've always done this, but the fact that the new buyers, when they're going to look for homes, we're, are required to sign a, a buyer broker, brokerage agreement? I think that's such a critical change. And, <clears throat> you know, I really do think that's the, the thing that as professionals, we should be reaching out to the people, you know, to our networks and letting them know this is not something to be fearful of but this is a change. And so in a nutshell, in order to view a property that's listed in the MLS, you have to have an employment agreement with your, um, with your broker, with your agent in order to, before you are allowed to see houses that are listed in the, in the MLS. And I think it's a wonderful change because it has, it offers that transparency and clarification about here's what we're doing, here's how we get compensated, here's how that changes under certain circumstances, and here's what everybody's responsibility is in that from the agent and the broker mm -hmm. and to the act to the buyer. You know, what is your responsibility as part of this agreement? Um, so I think it's very beneficial. We at Indy Realty have always used buyer broker agreements, um, so it doesn't shock us at all. Uh, there will be some changes to some formatting and some, some wording in it. And there may be different types of buyer broker agreements that will be out there. But that is really something that we should be getting out to the public is you want to see a house, expect to have to sign the document. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing I want, to, <clears throat> I want to get out to them. But they don't have to sign a document to call you to sit there and get a loan, do they? I'm sorry, what was the question? They don't have to call a doc get sign a document or anything to, to get a loan from you, do they? Uh, we go through a process yes okay. you've been through it you know you gotta take we do have to get an application we do have to pull credit um i you know my, my question for don and and i think some people don't understand this but um if you're gonna go show somebody a house you really like to have a arizona pqf in hand right before you guys are showing houses uh i believe so yeah i mean i think that should be the standard practice is um before you go into a house you need to make sure that you know that you're qualified you know you have to get at least that pre-approval from a lender. I mm -hmm. am a very, very big advocate of don't just even get a pre-qualification, get a pre-approval, mm -hmm. go through the process. So once you find the house that you are in love with, it's smooth sailing. Like we're not worried about uh, landmines as far as the lending goes as much if you do more of that process up front. Now, I, I'm certainly during the course of my career, 
somebody popped up says I want to see a house and then we have weighed well do we want to go take a look at it before we talk to a lender and you know I'm not saying it doesn't happen mm -hmm. but it's a very good practice to to make sure that as a buyer you're qualified so when you walk in if you should fall in love with it if you should make a buying decision on the spot which believe it or not happens yep you know that you're qualified you know that you're ready to go and that's why we say reach out to to John at Inspired Life Mortgage and get yourself in order I think we try to emphasize the move that the first step is, is to get pre qualified or pre-approved. That makes it easier. I think Sandra was saying one time when we talked about having someone go out there and look at a house. Oh, I love this house. Yep, this is the one. Yep, we want to go do it. Let's go write an offer. And then they go get go get pre qualified and pre-approved and realize, I can't afford it. That That's a big breaker for you sometimes. Yeah, we're not in, like for Breaking us, hearts. we're in business for to change people's lives, to impact people's lives positively you know, to facilitate just great changes in people's lives. And so, yeah, uh, being heartbreakers is not, That's not <laughs> nobody gets any satisfaction <laughs> out of that. That's for sure. You know, I had a buyer recently who had a pre-qualification form at a certain price range and then went to see a house that was a lot higher than that price range and wasn't sure if they were going to be able to qualify for that house. And they really wanted to make an offer and we had to go through a process again of trying to get the prequal form. And it took a few days. You never know. There are sometimes circumstances where something needs, you know, you need extra um, information. You need to explain something. And that process is not always as quick, you know, if there's mm -hmm. something else on there. I don't know. I, John, I'm sure you can speak I, to that. No, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And we were, we were, we were using a very particular guideline to get some extra income to get her qualified for her situation and you know the larger house required more down payment well the more down payment ate into the assets which ate into her qualifying income so there was there was just a lot that went into it that had to be clarified and ended up switching from Fannie Mae to Freddie Mac and going from one lender to another who would accept this particular guideline with Freddie Mac and so it, it, it took a few days to get her qualified again but we did well and that's the thing John made it work but knowing ahead of time before going into the house that she <laughs> was good to go would have been a really good thing and saved us a few days. <coughs> yes. And yeah. a few gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> You're here to listen to the I Am Real Estate Show with Don Geisler and John Spur. They are all, both of their businesses are local, a local business here in Tucson. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show with Sandra Ray and Danielle. <laughs> that would I be Danielle Johnson. That time. <laughs> Welcome to the third segment of the I Am Real Estate Show. We're here with John Spur. He's the CEO and founder of Inspire Life Mortgage, which is a subsidiary of Inspire Life Group. We also have Don Geisler, who's the CEO and designated broker for Indy Realty. And, and also, Don is our boss, so we got to be nice. <laughs> you guys are can, really can nice. I, can I just say it? Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <clears throat> we, uh, we talked a little bit before the show, when the second segment about the um, Clients need their pre-approval or, or pre-qual, and Don said you better. It's best to have the peer pre-approval. Can you explain the difference, Don? John, sure. <laughs> um, Whatever your name is. It, yeah, the pre-qual is. And it, I always say a pre-qual is just a loan officer's opinion, and if you can get into a house, and it, it really, it most people that are doing pre-quals. They're talking to you. They ask you how much do you make, how much money do you have in the bank. Um, do you know what your credit score is? They're just asking general questions, and then they're generally saying, well, I think you can go buy this house. How it, long is that process? I can do it in five minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not long. Um, it's not very accurate either, because I, I ask people how much money they make. Like, oh, well, why, why, what was deposited in my bank account was $1,800. Well, what was deposited in your bank account and what I actually used to qualify you for a house are two completely different things. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll say, oh, my credit karma credit score was 750. Well, your credit karma credit score is not a mortgage credit report credit score. So it, it's not an accurate way to do it. It's a good conversation to maybe this is what I think I can afford. If you want to go buy a house, we need to do a pre-approval. We need to go through the whole process. And I need to see a pay stub and a W-2 and a bank statement. At a minimum, I need to run it through the automated underwriting system. Um, if the uh, automated underwriting doesn't find something it doesn't like, then we need to put it in front of an underwriter and get them to sign off on it. That can be as much as a half hour to a couple days, depending if we have to put it in front of an mm -hmm. underwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it can take longer if you don't know how to find your pay stubs and your W-2s. Um, but it, it's a longer process, 
but you're going to know that when you go and look at that house and you write your offer that you qualify for that house and there's no surprises. <laughs> Well, and when you're submitting that offer from the seller perspective, if you know that someone has already gone through the pre-approval process, it helps your offer to be stronger because it's less likely that you're going to have to cancel due to financing. And the other part that comes along with that, if the LO is doing their job the way they should do it, is I'm not giving you just an Arizona pre-qualification form, which is what you guys require. I'm also giving you on Inspired Life Letterhead, a pre-approval letter for that specific address you're making the offer on. It has the address on it, it has the specific amount of the offer, the loan amount, taxes, insurance, it indicates what documents we still need to get them mm -hmm. to the closing table. So they're, they're getting an approval that says, hey, this person's gone through all the steps. And so that's got to mean a lot to the seller on the other end when they're getting multiple offers. Darn. Yeah, I mean, these are the things that set set you apart mm -hmm. from the competition when you are in competition and you're submitting bunches of offers. And, you know, <clears throat> it's even likely or somewhat likely that the seller may have already had a deal crash, mm -hmm. you know, due to financing. And so they're really uptight about it. So when you can present a, a well-written, well-constructed offer, and that's accompanied by this great letter that, that John provide saying these people are, are pre-approved and gives them all the information then again that sets you apart from the competition and that's i mean at, at indie realty that's what we're always <coughs> looking to do is be set set our agents apart from the competition set our buyers apart from the competition what i think you just said don and i i've, I've learned this back in my military days at first impressions so if you if your offer has a first impression this guy's done everything you need to do to, to, to recommend to for me to say okay I would like this offer because it's great. It looks best. They did their, best, did their homework. They did their pre-approval. Pre pre-approval. They got lending. They got a whole new use. They got a good agent. There's everything here. So here's your offer. So you're like, okay, I feel comfortable about this offer coming in front of me. Right. That's and that impression. sets you apart because you are also likely to be in competition with, with cash offers. Uh -huh. And sometimes the cash offers come in just a tad lower because people are willing to forego a couple bucks for the security of it not being having to go through the financing process. Right. So, um, you know, a seller, I, I always said to myself, like, the money all spends at the end. So, you know, so if we promise that we can get you get you there, mm -hmm. you don't have to accept less money, for, you know, because it's cash offer. But um, it's just great to have this accompanying document. Well, if we, we spend a couple days on the front end getting you fully pre-approved, where we get the pay stubs, we get the W-2s, we get the bank statements, tax returns, all the documentation we need, and get that signed off by the underwriter, this significantly reduces your closing time. Like this takes seven to 10 days out of the lending process. Mm -hmm. So instead of a 21 to 30 day close, maybe you're writing a 15 day offer that could possibly make you more competitive than somebody else. The one thing I always remember is that if you remember at the end of the transaction, when the seller gets their thing, it's not a loan, it's cash. Whether it's a cash offer or it's a loan offer, it's still cash that he gets. It, it doesn't <laughs> matter. And I often wonder at that moment, are they saying, Oh man, I should I could have yeah, I could have gotten a little bit more if I yeah. didn't, you know, I didn't have to give that money away because but you know, I understand up front when yeah. it's a cash offer, it's a very strong offer on a property and so but you want to be willing to you have to be able to offset that with the tools at your disposal. Again, I think that's where your agent comes into the picture that we have to make sure that when we're presenting an offer that we are presenting it in the best way and that we're listening to what that seller's needs are, mm -hmm. whether that is a time frame, if it's the net. Um, not every seller cares about every single dollar. Right. Some of them have other things that they value. And so as uh, real estate professionals, it's up to us to ask those questions and make sure that we are, you know, giving your offer the best opportunity that we can for it to, to make it all the way to the end and be accepted. And you're going through the same thing on your side, John, making sure that they, they feel comfortable with the information they're going to present to what they offer. As far as their documentation yeah. and work. Yeah. It, it, I mean, there's on, on the, on the mortgage side of it, we, I have to create a pretty picture for the underwriter, right? Everybody has something. Everybody's borrowing situation is unique. And so on our side of things, we're looking at all the documentation and we're putting putting together a picture for the underwriter that they are going to be willing to approve. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's a matter of being an expert at your craft and, and looking at it uh, correctly and providing, well, you know, in your case, a well-written offer, and in mm -hmm. my case, a well-documented file so that we can get to the finish line. 
I think the attention to detail makes a difference too because if you have an offer that you're presenting and you've forgotten several components of it, whether that's the HOA addendum, things that are going to be required, mm -hmm. that offer's not going to find Shine. itself on the top of the stack. I'm sorry, no. but um, the details do matter in our industry. Yeah, we're heading to a break. So if you're looking to buy or sell your home or if you have any questions concerning real estate, please call the Johnson Smith team. I'm looking at the TV as it says 520-850-1725, 520-904-7711, or 520-373-6864. We are, we will return back with John Spur and Don Geisler. Hey, thanks for sharing your Saturday with us. The last segment of the show, you're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show with Ray Smith, Sandra Johnson, and Danielle Johnson. We're here today with two great citizens of, United, of Tucson and United States of America. We have John Spur, the CEO and founder of Inspired Life Mortgage, and also Don Geis, the CEO and designated broker of Indie Realty. So, John, we know you have a really great down payment assistance grant that is available to you that not everyone has. Can you tell us a little bit about the grant and how it's different from other down payment assistance programs? It doesn't run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I, I mean, that's number one. It doesn't run out of money. Um, it, it's the Empower Grant. Um, I, I really like it because it, it's the closest thing you can get to having free money when it comes to down payment assistance. There's not what we call a silent second on your property for five years with the chance of having to repay it. Mm -hmm. um, it you know, in, in a seven, after the seventh payment is made, we can re refinance you out of the program if rates are lower. Um, so when rates drop, you do have an opportunity to get into the lower rates. And it doesn't have as many restrictions, I feel like, as the other down payment assistance programs. It has pretty broad buckets of uh, what people can fall in to qualify for it. And if you don't meet any of those, it's 140% of the adjusted median income, which in Tucson puts you around 120000 a year in income. So mm -hmm. if you make 120000 or less, you still qualify for the program. If you're not a first responder or in the medical field or a teacher or all the other, other broad buckets that it has. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I really like about the program is it's not a secondary agency that's issuing it. We control the underwriting. We control the funding. When we approve the loan, the grant is approved. We're not having to wait on another agency or another agency to fund it. Um, I said something earlier during the break. I don't know if you can talk about the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are going to be announcing the new AMI, Adjusted Median Income, uh, uh, and, or Area Media Income. Um, they're going to announce it on Sunday. That's when they normally do these things because they take the whole system down to update it. So I don't know what it'll be, uh, but I do know it'll be going up. So that'll help a lot of buyers uh, out there that may not have qualified for certain uh, first-time homebuyer programs because they made a little bit too much money. That AMI is going up, and you may now qualify for those programs. When you're qualifying so for the program on income, do you have to have both borrower's income? So the my grant is what they call qualifying income. So if you qualify on just one of the individual's income, we use just that. It's not household income. There are some down payment assistance programs out there that they look at household income. And so even if, say, your spouse isn't going on the transaction but has a job, that still goes into the calculation <coughs> and it could kick you out of the program. We only look at the qualifying income. Again, we talked about the first step in home buying is to get a hold of a good lender like Inspired Life Mortgage. How do you get a hold of you, Don? 520-247-3610 or at inspiredlifemortgage.com. That's okay, Ray. I'm just going to call you. I'm just going to call you R R S for the rest of the show. He is a ray of sunshine. <laughs> and Don, just so we can get <laughs> Don. So, how will people get a hold of you who wants to be be a part of an indie realtor? Um, so I can be reached at five two zero eight six nine two three seven six. We are located at seven two five five East Tanker Verde Road, right across the street from Udall Park. Uh, we're always invite uh, everybody in. We're always looking to hire great uh, real estate professionals there and i'm going to take like a moment just to plug uh, john here at inspired life mortgage i mean you've heard during the course of the broadcast here that he has at his disposal just so many resources to get things done and that experience and those resources really really go a long way and so what if you're looking to speak with a lender that you can trust absolutely uh, get a hold of john at inspired life I appreciate that. I'm a fan, man. 
I just want to say not all of us are walking at Udall Park. We are also conveniently located near Frost and <laughs> Zona 78. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the one thing I, I wanted to bring up is that times are changing in the real estate world. Yeah, but the one thing I, I can say that I don't think is changing is that our philosophy of that professionalism, the win-win situation, and the fact is that our, our fiduciary duties, those things have not changed and will not change no matter what's going on in the, in the, in the community or in as things change with the NAR, uh, NAR deal, whatever it's called. The settlement. Settlement, settlement. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, agents have a fiduciary responsibility to their mm-hmm. clients. And, you know, by definition, that means that the the good of the client gets put ahead of the good of the agent at all times. And so we are always, we're used to being advocates for our clients and that's not going to change. And regardless, one of the cool things about the co-op fee system and regardless whether it's changing a little or a lot or completely, you know, is that who is paying you does not dictate who your fiduciary responsibility is to. Mm -hmm. Your fiduciary responsibility is always to the person who you have the signed contract with and the agency with and so we are you know for us i always say a lot is in is right in our name indie we are independent but that doesn't mean that we're lackadaisical we are extremely professional we are out on top of you know the things that need to be done and um you know i also should pitch the johnson smith team while we are here also you guys do a fantastic job at what you guys do we appreciate that and we love being at indie we also um, love what John does. Yes. Um, if you do call us, we're going to send you straight to John Spur because we really appreciate the quality of service that our clients get there. Um, and so, yeah, we I think we have a strong team. And that team goes beyond just real estate, beyond lending, um, into title, um, handymen, HVAC companies. I mean, we really have surrounded ourselves with quality people. And that's how we're getting some stuff done. And I will tell you, real estate is not easy right now. It is difficult. And a lot of what we're dealing with are having to overcome challenges, whether those are physical things going on at the property or if there are buyers that just need us to maybe go that extra step to make sure that they're getting what they need. Mm -hmm. Um, Appraisals. I think I told John the other day we had an appraisal come in where the carpet had to be clean and he said, I, in all my 36 30, 30, years? 32 years, 32 I've never years. had carpet cleaning a condition of an appraisal. Yeah, and so those are the kinds of things that, you know, sometimes <laughs> that means that you're out cleaning carpets and sometimes you're grabbing a paintbrush, although we don't advocate that, right, Don? <laughs> uh, no, we don't really want to take responsibility Billies. for doing things that are not no. in our wheelhouse, but um, trust me, I've painted, painted plenty of windowsills and fascia boards and... All kinds of stuff to get transactions. We, we want to get the we want to get the job done. And I think the, the thing that we I want people to realize that Indie Realty <clears throat> is that um, working for Don is about relationships. We, we've understood that every transaction has to happen, but without the having a relationship between you and your buyer, you and your seller, and you and the other agent, where both you can get a win-win situation, it's pretty good. I think Danielle was saying sometime that uh, people hear about our names and really like working with people from Indie Realty. And that's, I think, it's done a lot. That's a lot to do with, not with you, Don. Do you have something to say? Well, I'll just say I had an agent that I called the other day to show one of her listings, and through the conversation, she's like, "Okay, I just have to say, when I saw that your name, you know, that you're from Indie Realty, I was really excited because I've heard really good things about your brokerage, and wanted to ask about it. And so it's cool that, you know, that the name is getting out there, that the reputation is out there, that." other agents know that we are working hard for our clients and that we are you know we're we're trying to be the absolute best that we can be and that's just a really good thing to have mm-hmm. out there yeah it's super gratifying it means a lot i mean and i recently referred to don a agent i've worked with for a while that was struggling and not getting the support that they needed and it's just been a few weeks that they've been there and they have called me and thanked me multiple times for making the connection because they're they're just getting the support they need and they have transactions in the works and it, it, it's I enjoy working with you guys I work with a lot of real estate agents mm-hmm. and I love working with Indy because I, I know what I'm going to get and I know the transaction is going to close yeah training leadership relationships are all what we're about and transactions will happen accordingly 
if you do like Don said, the numbers will help you. <laughs> before we before we wrap up, because I know that it's going to be a few weeks before we have a chance to talk to you again, John. Um, one of the benefits of being a homeowner is that you do have equity in your house. And we talk a lot about interest rates and interest rates have not been particularly kind to us in this industry. But um, that equity that people have built in their home has definitely been able to help them get over the hump with some of the increases in interest rates on personal debt. Do you want to talk about some of the solutions that you have for our homeowners? Yeah, I can do that real quick. And I was wondering when the uh, five letter R word was going to come up. Um, <laughs> home, home equity. Americans are sitting on more equity than they've ever had in the history uh, in their house. And credit card rates and unsecured debt is at the highest rates have been in years. Um, and so I've helped many, many people obtain a HELOC or a closed and the second, would allow, which allows them to tap the equity in their home at a significantly lower rate than credit cards and pay off these high rate cards. And I've, I've had people that I'm saving them six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month in monthly wow. payments. Um, and it's not because they weren't spending wisely. When your credit card rate goes from four to 24, Mm-hmm. your payment quadruples and and so it's just been a, been a pain p- point for a lot of people so if your credit card payments have just reached a ridiculous amount or you're just tired of paying that high interest rate and you have equity in your home there is a solution which is way different than saying take out the equity in your house and go buy a boat we're talking it's about very solving different. problems solving, for people yes. financial problems and having the assets to do that because you've prepared for it yeah, and that, and that's you know you worked hard to get that home, and you worked hard to have that equity, and you know it, it can be a relief from some high interest rate debt. Thanks How can I get a hold of you, Don? Me, you can get a hold of Don Geisler at five two zero eight six nine two three seven six. How about you, John? Uh, InspiredLifeMortgage dot com or five two zero two four seven thirty six ten. And we are closing the show. We want to thank Indie Realty, Inspired Life Mortgage, Pioneer Title Agency. Rego Pest Prevention and Pillar to Post Home Inspections. They sponsor the show, and if it wasn't for them, we would not have the opportunity to be here each week. So please, if you call them, let them know that you heard about them on the I Am Real Estate Show. Where the I Am stands for Integrity Matters.